Banks, uh, all commodities in general, uh, softs, uh, iron, steel, and, and anything that sort of goes clunk in the night, cyclicality, not good. Let's talk about banks. You know, um, I had a teacher mentor. He said, if you can draw a straight line, you'll probably be okay in this business. Just the hell, I thought he was insulting me, but actually he was being very, very candid. That's a very straight line, isn't it? And guess what? I'll be darned. It kind of just rallies there and fails. Now, consensus, of course, was that this was going to be a head and shoulders bottom on Wall Street. But it's nothing of the kind. It's some sort of weird, bizarre, um, not a head and shoulders bottom. It's something that has failed repeatedly, 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 and it is failing again. Now, more importantly than absolute return, of course, is relative, opportunity cost. Here is the real tragedy. If I put the line from the low, and one could say that banks, while they're up, that's true, of course, their relative performance is straight down. And also, it has failed to the penny, to the penny, to the penny at this relative downtrend line. And it hit that line literally today and sunk again. Not a great setup. In fact, if you pull this back even further, now I want to single out what's really what's happened since the 2016 presidential election. That's what happens right here. That's your Trump bump. And so, look at the next slide. And what we know is this, that basically all of the alpha, right? So this is the index itself. This is relative performance to the market on the bottom. We have undone the entire election. We are trading below where we were three plus years ago. And that's not adjusting for beta or cyclicality and risk. So not good, not good today. And I don't know what the narrative is that makes it good going forward. Yeah, come on over. We'll finish the conversation uh, on the desk. Let's trade the banks. Well, if you think about bank earnings this quarter, uh, expectations were relatively light. There was some boost. There was a boost from mortgages. Uh, the yield curve actually was steepening into bank earnings, and that was something that was very beneficial to banks. It's part of that little blip up that Carter says, which he thinks is now failing at resistance. Uh, I, I just say this: Look, right now with the 189 ten-year and the jury's still out in terms of where growth is, the curve's going to continue to flatten. Right now, the, the, the bond market is pushing on the Fed to do the, their next move. In the short run, though, um, I actually still like banks. They haven't been a disaster. Yes, they've been sideways for 12 to 18 months, but but you're close, if not at record earnings across the group. You're paying their, their capital allocation, as seen by J.P. Morgan, almost failing intentionally, the capital, essentially the C-car, because they want to give more capital back to investors. For investors, banks are being run differently. I think they're being run for equity investors. And, and J.P. Morgan used to be everyone's favorite bank. They're up 15 percent year to date. I know you don't think it matters, but I think Citigroup has been the outperformer. They're up 31 percent. Goldman, Goldman Sachs, up Goldman 20, was the best, for, one of the best performers somewhere thereabouts in I mean, the Dow. The, in, the in bull July. case, clients say it is that look, the balance sheets are better than they've ever been. Right, the, the dividends are on the rise, and that their credit but, quality is go. But guess what? When the cycle <laughs> changes, what happens? I, they start I agree. Doing the, the, right biggest, the, the biggest provisions. bullish thing was yeah, deregulation, and you had the tax cuts. Those, those are the two most bullish things that could have ever happened to the XLF or to these big banks. But if you still have to hide in them or you want to be have some exposure, I think you stay with a Goldman or well, a if, you saw, if you thought there was going to be a rate cut cycle, you could get a steepening of the yield curve right. and that would Which be you good got. for the bank. Well, so I'm saying, I don't no, know. I'm saying, now, I, now, if you're not going to get the cycle. Uh, no, I agree with you. I guess right? what I'm saying is you got that going into the, to the, the Fed meeting and the testimony. Yes, because and you in thought fact, maybe you were going to get because it. Because that's what people thought. And then and there is also that just it's only the U.S. banks. I mean, Japanese banks are making new five-year lows. European banks did the whole thing. Seven-year lows. Seven-year so. lows in Europe. So I, I'll just simply say, look at credit, by the way. What else was up today? High yield was up today. So until the credit market starts to, and that's, of course, that's what everybody said. I mean, Powell yesterday talked about the banks, talked about the strength of the financial system. He's right. Carter's saying it. Yes. Doesn't guarantee necessarily that they're going to be strong tomorrow if we have essentially this, this trip, sorry, this triple B uh, tranche of credit out there that looks like it's very vulnerable.